When querying your database, making sure that your data is stored and limited is one of the key for better performance of your queries and applications. So how do we limit, sort, and or skip documents in our queries? When you request a document back from MongoDB under the covers, the database return back is called cursor. Technically, you are in the find command via the shell with the driver and your programming language. Even though it's sent to the server, it actually doesn't run right away. Instead, it waits until the results are back. This happens automatically unless you manually iterate on the cursor. But it's important to understand nonetheless. While this might not seem like a huge difference, what it allows you to do is add an extra commands after find to do what's called chaining. After find, if you have ever used JavaScript framework like jQuery, you're likely very familiar with the concept. The order of the items you chain together does not matter, but how they change your results matter a great deal. One of the most basic queries option is the limit. As its name implies, limits the number of results returned. To illustrate this, let's look at our recipe collection and we are going to do find all documents and request account back. As you can see, we get the number of documents in our collection. To make this a little easier to see, let's limit this to the titles only like this. And now we get all the document titles in our collection. Now, if we want to limit our result, we just use dot limit. And now we've limited our results to two. We can do three and so and so. Another very common query option is sort. Now sort will take documents in itself where the K is being the field you want to sort on and the value being which direction you want to use. So ones mean ascending, minus one means descending. For example, here, I did an ascending sort on the title. Now, as you can see, we got all the recipes back with an ascending order for title. A less used, but sometimes useful query is skip. So let's keep our results sorted. And then we choose to skip the first document like this. When I run this query, I can see that the first recipe was not returned and the result starts from the second document. You can chain together many of these commands as you kind of already noticed. So if you want, you can skip one and limit one and I get the result. I also can skip one and limit two, then I get this result. Next, we will talk about different operators we can use in our queries and also how to query data stored in arrays. MongoDB has a number of operators that can be used on your fields, like string, number, array, object, or even some document. And we can use operators to conditionally filter our results. Most of the operators will likely work in a familiar way, but how they look might be a little bit different and odd at the beginning. Since MongoDB uses JSON-like syntax for its queries, using some operators like greater than and less than won't work. Avoid this problem. MongoDB queries use strings with dollar sign in front of them. So once you have these strings down, you will be able to create much richer queries. Now, as you understand, when you want to say greater than, you will use $GT and for less than, you will use $LT and instead of lesser than or equal to, you will use $LTE string. One more thing before we start practicing, make sure that you input the recipe collection from the recipe JSON file in your exercise files. Now, remember the features of quick meals requested by our manager at the meeting? Let's try to do that. To do so, we want to query our collection to find out all the recipes with a cook time less than or equal to 30 minutes. We can use the following query to do this. db.recipe.find cook time is 
dollar LTE 30 and then we will limit our query to only the titles. We specify the cook time, our LTE at 30 minutes. Now we give back all the recipes that will take 30 minutes or less to cook. Okay, that's fine. But there is also the prep time. So let's add on check for prep time for 10 minutes or less. You can do this, which is equivalent to an AND query by simply adding comma prep time is dollar LTE 10 minutes. Now we can also do an OR query by prefacing our condition with OR and we put our two filters in array. So this time we have OR and an array with cook time and prep time. So what about querying arrays or objects? For this, let's take a look at our tax array, where we have some useful information about recipes. For example, here we have tacos, which has tags as Mexican, quick, easy, ground beef. We also have apple pie with tags traditional, and 4th of July. If you want to find all documents that were tagged as easy, we can simply use db.recipes.find tags easy and we will get all the recipes that have easy somewhere in their tags. But what if we want easy and Mexican? At this point, you might think that you can just add an array or something like this. This won't work because MongoDB will see this as an exact match for the array and try to do an exact match on the arrays on the documents. So, in other words, you will have to send an entire content of the array to match on documents. Instead, you need to use a completely different operator in this case, which is all. So we say tax dollar all easy. And now we got our results back. On the other hand, if you want the recipe that are easy or Mexican, we can use in operator and we will get more recipe this time. Lastly, if we want to reach inside the data that are in an object, or an array, we use the dot notation. For this, let's take a look at the ingredient field. Here we have a complex object that has a name of the ingredient and quantity, etc. Now, if we want to get back all the recipes with eggs on them, we could simply use the dot notation like this. Now, just to illustrate, if we construct a query and ask for ingredients with an object inside name with the value of egg, which you think might work, but it doesn't. Because again, it is the same problem as before. It's looking for an exact match. So we need to write out the whole object or erase content for that to work. So remember to use the dot notation unless you want to do an exact match. Next, we will talk about how to use update to your query. At some point, your data is going to need to change because you decided to change your schema, user update, or profile, or as it in this course, we made a spelling mistake that we want to change. In this course, we will be using examples.json that we uploaded previously in this course so that we don't mess with our recipes collection. Most of the time, you just need to do update one document. To do this, we can use update one along with a couple operators. In this course, we will cover dollar set, dollar inset, and dollar inc as an in increment. On the other hand, 
The update command will update multiple documents, but works basically the same way. By the way, MongoDB has also a concept of absurd, which will update or insert depending on a matching document or field already exists or not. You can see a link in the comment if you want to learn more about this. To update a field, we can use the set operator first. Let's get a list of our recipes from the examples collection. Here we can see the recipes we have. Now say that we want to update the title of the pizza recipe. To be more descriptive, this is actually a thin crust pizza. Well, we can do that by running db.examples.update1 title. And you will see it matched one document and modified one document. If we get our listing again, we will see that this is now called thin crusted pizza. In this case, we will use the title as our filter, but we could have used the ID, for example. If we want to be more specific about which document I am updating, if you run set on a document that do not have that field already, what will happen? Well, let's go ahead and try that now. Let's find out that document as it is. We can see that the documents only have the title for now. Let's run back our set again, but this time we will change this a little bit. So what we did right here is changing the title to Tin Crusted Pizza and we added a new K, Vegan, which is set to false because the, this pizza has meat on it. Now, it tells us that it matches a document and modified a document. And if we look up for a recipe with Tin Crusted Pizza, then we will get a document with K, Vegan, False on it. If we no longer want this field on it anymore, we can use unset operator. So we will use the same query with little modification. So what we did right here is changing the set to unset. And instead of setting the value for this field to be false, we will just tell it use this field vegan and we will put one for true. So this means that we unset the field and when we do this, we will see that this field is gone. Now, what if we want to increment a field without having to know the value of that field at the time of the query run? To do this, let's go ahead and check out the example tacos recipe. I will just go ahead and print the document using pretty. You can see that this is full fledged recipe like we have been working with earlier. So here we have our likes array and likes count, which is pre-calculated count of the number of values in the like array. Now, if you want to increment the number of items in the like count field by one, in other words, simulated another user liking the recipe, well, we can do that by using ink operator. So the way that works is very similar to the set, but instead of setting a field, we will still give a filter of what document we want, and we will tell it which field we want to increment. In this case, it's the likes account, and we will tell it by how much. So it could be 1 or 10 or even 100. It could be also a negative number like minus 1. Actually, It could be whatever we want to increment the value it currently is by. And again, it tells us that a document is matched and one modification was made. So we can go ahead and check this and we will get the incremented likes count from 2 to 3. Again, if we want to run the query and we use minus 1 instead of 1, and we go ahead and check the document again, we can see that our document was updated and the likes count is back to 2. 
Doing it by this way is very useful as it guarantees what we call eventual consistency. The database will make sure the fields is always increased by, in our case 1, with this atomic operator. However, you never need to worry about that. Keep in mind by default there aren't any logs or transaction on queries. Next. We will talk about updating or modifying an array. Working with fields that contain an array means that we need to work with different types of operators, push and pull. To add an item to the array, we can use push, which we will push the item on the end of an array. So let's start off again with our taco specific and take a look at the likes array. So there are two items in it two users IDs. Let's go ahead and push a new user ID into that array. So we can do, we specify that we want to update the document that has the title tacos. And in the second parameter, we say that we want to push something like something into likes array. And in this case, we add a user ID, which is 16. And then we close that out. See that it's matched one document and updated one. We can go ahead and run our find document again, and you will see now that we have user ID 60 added to our likes array. If we want to remove that, we can simply use the pull operator. So instead of push, we can just change that to pull. And again, it acknowledged that and updated correctly. And if you do find again, you can see that it has gone from the lex array. Now, in this case, I use it in int. However, it could be a string, an array, or even an entire object, whatever valid in there. There are also a number of other array operators that we can use. Next, we'll talk about how to delete document. Updating document is great, but sometimes things go really messed up, or you just need more disk space. So you need to delete documents. We have two basic options delete one or delete many. Both take filter documents like find and update commands. For delete one, the first matching document in the collection is deleted. For delete many, all documents that match will be deleted. Obviously, if you're writing a query that you expect to only ever delete single document, use one to be safe. You can provide the ID or any other sort of filter. Let's take a quick look at the document in our example collection. Now, let's say that we want to delete this delete me document. We could take a look at the object ID here and delete it. And it acknowledged it and deleted it for me. If we get the list of our document now, we can see that it's gone. Now we could also make a filter check, for example, likes count for any document that don't have likes. 